Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to model in Nomad Sculpt a Noche Buena flower, also known as Poinsettia, but I prefer its original name. Let's get started with the shape of the leaves. Inside the scene menu, I'm going to create a plane. Right away, it's going to open this menu. I'm going to focus on the area that says Topology and I'm going to bring this number down. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I like to start with very low resolution because it's easier to manipulate. Around 5 should be fine, so I'm gonna validate this. I'm gonna go in a top view. By the way, if you cannot see that cube, all you need to do is go into the display settings and select snap cube. I also have my wireframe on, which I turn on and off with this bottom button, which says wire, short for wireframe. With the gizmo I'm gonna extend this a tiny bit and now I'm gonna use my move tool to shape this as a leaf. Nothing fancy about it, all I'm gonna do is change its size so I have different areas of influence. What I'm trying to get is a general silhouette of this leaf. I have the plants right here next to me so I'm referencing a real thing and I made a couple of drawings beforehand I always like to familiarize myself with the shapes before trying to sculpt them. Once you're happy with the shape, let's go to the topology menu again. On the first tab, multi-resolution, I'm gonna tap where it says subdivide. So I get a bit more resolution, but I can switch between low and high. With this extra mesh, I can detail this silhouette even farther. This is my base leaf, from which I'm gonna create a bunch of duplicates to populate my flower. Just for safety, I'm gonna duplicate this guy here in the scene menu by tapping on this double squares and change the name so you know which one is the original. Don't forget to save your project inside your project menu. I'm gonna create a bit for variation because I don't want all my leaves to look the same. In fact, I'm gonna go into multi-resolution again and tap on subdivide once again so I can have a tiny bit more topology to work with and make this shape even nicer. I'm gonna go back to the mid-resolution level, so not as little but not as much, and I'm gonna choose Select Mask, set it to Rectangle, and with that create a mask selection of only the middle points. And with that create a mask selection of only in the middle of the leaf. Here at the top I'm gonna invert this selection and let's blur it a couple times. Now with the gizmo tool, bring this down. And because we blurred this selection, you can see that we get a nice fall off and we can start shaping this leaf. With the mask still on, feel free to use your move tool to give some variety to this shape. The objective at this stage is to get nice silhouettes. It doesn't matter how you rotate your object, you want to have some nice flowing curve. And you can even scale the center down a little bit to make that sharper. Select your mask tool again and you can clear mask from this menu. And we can make even more modifications freely with the whole leaf selected. Don't forget that if you go into a lower resolution level it will be easier to manipulate. Any change that you create is going to be reflected on higher resolution levels. I am pretty happy with this so we can move on to the next stage which is creating the stem for this specific leaf. Before I carry on, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has supported the channel via Gumroad and especially on Patreon. If you would like to help us bring out more tutorials and get some rewards in return, check out the links for our Patreon or Gumroad store. Now, for this stage, we are going to use the tube tool. Make sure that you set it to path and here at the top, I'm going to choose as a snapping method every point. This is gonna allow me to make points and they're gonna attach to the surface that is already here. When you tap on this green dot, it's gonna create that tube. I'm gonna create a new one. Before doing so, I wanna snap to a top view, so I'm gonna tap my cube to help me snap and I'm gonna tap it and hold it so it's locked. So I'm not gonna be able to rotate, I'm only gonna be able to zoom in, which is gonna be really useful. Now with tube, I once again select pad and I'm gonna make this dots. It's okay if they're not perfect because I can modify them later. Tap again that cube 
and you'll get out of that locked view. Let's open this topology menu and lower this resolution. This is way too high for what I need. You will notice that here at the top we have this little jello dot. This is going to control the radius of this tube. By default, you have only one which controls the whole thing. But on this top menu, we have another radius button. If you tap it again, you'll get another controller at the bottom so you can have different sizes at the start at the end. Or even cooler, tap it again and each of these points will have its own radius controller. This is cool, but for today I only need two. In most of these points it will give you a nice curve, but if you tap them once again, you will get a corner. Maybe between these two points I need another one. All I need to do is tap on that line in between and that's going to create that point there. If you're happy with it, you can go ahead and validate it. The only problem is that once you validate, you cannot change it. So I actually rather wait. You can simply undo and it's going to be back. So you have these controllers in case you want to do any modification. You can go ahead and work again on your leaves, work on other parts of the flower. And at any point, simply go back to this and modify what's needed. You can already work with these flat leaves, but if you want to give them some volume, use the Selection Mask brush and any method that you want, the lasso works just fine, to select the whole thing, every single face. I'm going to tap on Solo to only see the leaf, to not get distracted with any other geometry, and open the Selection Mask menu. At the very top, we have the Extract options. This slider is going to let us select the thickness that we want to give to this leaf. I'm going to set border smoothness all the way down to zero and make sure that down here on extract this is set to shell. Let's do a test, see how this looks and tap on extract. So this is the result that we're going to get. It might not be perfect, we'll need to do some adjustments. I could attempt to fix it using smooth and relax. It only gets finicky on the areas that are too compressed. Now that we're happy with this, we can bring back the stem and we'll have to readjust it, so it was good that I didn't validate it yet. So we got our base leaf. From this we can create duplicates, make adjustments and start populating our plant. But let's now go and learn how to do the pot and the stem. Now for the pot, I'm gonna go into the scene menu and select a cylinder primitive. Let's bring this down and lower that topology. I like somewhere around 18, so let's validate this. Let's once again use our selection mask set to lasso and select the bottom of this. Let's blur this selection and with the gizmo let's scale this up. Once again this blur mask gives us a nice fade Maybe select the bottom again. Let's invert this mask. And let's just adjust a tiny bit this one with that nice shape. Let's solo this spot, look at it from a top view. Once again, selection mask, let's select this center. Selection mask is gonna go through, so you'll have to unmask the bottom. Use this button on the left. You can now invert your mask and with that selection make it a tiny bit bigger and then pull it down. We can delete the mask here in the very same menu. This is the basic shape for a pot. Let's go into the multi-resolution level and subdivide it once. I'm quite happy with this except from the top which gets really thin. To fix this, I'm gonna do a mask selection with a simple brush mask to get that inner ring. Once again, invert the mask and move this up to align it with the top edge. We can get rid of this mask and the pot looks much nicer with that thick edge. And now for the dirt, I'm gonna create yet another cylinder, but this one I'm gonna squish it and place it inside the pot. For this one, I will need a lot of resolution, so I will validate it like this. Let's solo it. And in the topology menu on the second tab, Voxel, let's bring this number up. Let's test 200. So we have a 
lot of mesh there. Now I want you to choose a stamp brush. This brush uses an alpha image. If I tap and drag, it's going to add that image. The more I drag, the bigger that image is going to be. I can reduce the intensity and you'll see that it will push it less high. Still, I don't want a square. I want to choose something dotty. And with this, I'm going to simulate dirt. I need the intensity quite low. I don't need to have this too crazy. And oh no, the bottom is also affected. To avoid this, because I want a flat bottom, I'm going to go into the stroke menu, scroll down where it says front facing vertex only. This is going to ignore the walls on the back, what the camera cannot see and should only affect what is in the front. This is what it looks like so far. Our pot with dirt, our leaf. So now it's time to create the stem. I'm gonna go into the scene menu and name things because I don't want to get confused. I'm also gonna hide the leaf so it's not on my way. And as you can imagine, the next step is creating the stem. I'm gonna choose a tube tool set it to pad and this time select for snapping snap and end because i don't want it to snap on surfaces on every point but rather just where i started go ahead and create the points for your stem and tap on the green circle now that it's created we can modify it make it really start on the center adjust these locations and as always lower this topology so it's easier to manipulate and let's give it a tiny radius change. This plan doesn't really change the width of the stem too much. If you're gonna move the whole thing all together at the same time, you can use the gizmo tool. And let's just do one little detail for this dirt. Why not use the drag tool and push this dirt down where the stem is originating. And in general, you might wanna break that perfect flatness from this primitive cylinder. We want her to turn off symmetry, so this is not perfectly even. Let's bring back the leaf. And with this checklist, on the left I'm gonna select the stem and the mesh. Then I'm gonna select the gizmo, so I can move both things at the same time. I wanna make sure that I like the scale. I know that I'm gonna make duplicates and still modify it, but just looking in general at the whole collection of things. The very last piece we have to create are the involucres which I have no idea if I am pronouncing correctly, but these are those bot shaped green structures at the top center of the plant. So I'm gonna create a sphere primitive. Let's put it all the way up and scale it closer to what is gonna be its real size. Right here in parameter, I can also change the subdivisions that the sphere comes with and validate this. Let's select the move tool and I'm gonna make sure that I turn on normal. Normal is gonna make sure that I'm moving this in the direction that it's already pointing at. If I turn it off then it's gonna follow my pen. Make sure that you turn off normal because it can be annoying if, if you don't need it. Let's subdivide. Let's use normal once again just to push this up a tiny bit and subdivide again and we get a very clean very lovely egg shape i'm gonna lower one resolution level and just flatten out the bottom let's make sure that i name this guy you can appreciate from the photos that some of these guys have some stigmas coming out of it what a jello tip if that is something that you want to add to yours maybe have some with and some without them we can create with a tube tool a little stem coming out of it bring down this topology. This is quite a tiny geometry, so you don't really need to detail it in the grand scheme of things. Unless you do a close-up, it's barely going to be visible. This should be good enough. Let's create another sphere. Bring this topology quite low. Make this even smaller. I'm just going to turn them into long flattened spheres. Actually, I can even make this even thinner so we have a nice contrast between these two. Let's name everything because we're going to create a lot of duplicates and I don't want to get lost with all this geometry. To create duplicates, 
Go to the scene menu and select the groups that you want to duplicate. In this case, I just want the leaf mesh and the stem. Let's go to a top view and I'm going to unlock the pivot by tapping here. I'm going to move it all the way to the base. Let's change the view and have it start right at the same location as the stem. Tap again the pivot icon and now you'll be able to move this two as a group from that point. The next thing is going to tap on the clone button. This is going to clone both geometries. Unfortunately the pivot doesn't stay in the same place so we'll have to modify it. And then you can move this and place them in a different location. You can of course select the individual leaf and make adjustments to it. Either with the gizmo or with your brushes. If you want these changes to remain symmetrical, go into the symmetry menu and switch it to local. Then that's going to respect the location of your object, doesn't matter how rotated it is. As for these top structures, which I still cannot pronounce their name, you can do the very same thing. Select them as a group, clone them, and change the location. This next stage is all about duplicating, tweaking, moving around, rotating. I don't want to bore you with the whole recording, which is why this is playing at faster speed. Take your time to make it look good. Change the size, the rotation, the shape overall. Just make sure that it doesn't look repetitive. If you keep the shapes the same, it's gonna be visible. Spending some time creating variety is key. Make sure that you zoom out every once in a while to see how the whole thing is working. Avoid tunnel vision. It's not about just one piece, but about the whole thing working together. And if you have the chance, seriously, use real reference. Have it close to you, take photos, make sketches. When you have a better understanding in general of the prop, your results are gonna be much better. Alright, for the very last stage, why not give this flower some color? First of all, I'm going to go into the sun menu and change the shading into PBR. You can change the environment by tapping on this image and choosing among the different options that we have. When choosing colors, I like to choose something like this, studio, because the lights have no tint. So my color choice is going to be more accurate. And as you already know, we have a lot of geometry, which can be annoying. Good thing that we spend a bit of time to name it all, so it's gonna be easier to deal with this. Let's start with this one that is called Stigma Stem. I'm gonna select every single one that has the very same name. And just to be super sure, let's go into Display Settings and Activate Outline. You'll see that I use this every so often. Sometimes it can get on the way, but it's useful to know what is selected. It appears that I have there my pod selected. So let's unselect that, here we go, and once you have all your selections, you're going to do a simple merge. Now all of those geometries are going to be together in one place. Alternatively, you can hold down smooth and start tapping on different geometries. Having this outline becomes very useful. Try to get all of them in one go, but it's okay if you don't. Once again, we go into this scene menu and scroll down to simple merge. Now all of the sleeves are together as one object. Repeat the process with every single shape here until you have just a couple groups. And now we can go into this painting menu to add some paint. For today's video, I'm only going to do vertex painting inside Nomad. But if you're interested in taking this into Procreate, check out the video that I created for it. Also, our Patreon supporters will have access to this model ready to go for Procreate. You don't need to do anything to it in Nomad, you just have to bring it into Procreate and have fun painting. Anyway, in this menu, here I'm going to choose a nice red. And for this roughness, I'm gonna bring it quite high because these leaves are not really shiny, otherwise they look like plastic. And make sure that metalness is all the way down to zero because this is not metallic. Once you're happy with your pick, just tap on paint all. 
Once again, for the other bits, the steps are the same, so I'm not gonna bore you repeating the same over and over again. And here we go, our poinsettia, our Noche Buena flower, is all ready to show off on the social media. Don't forget that you can tap on the snowbat icon in the top left and select turntable, record your screen and bam, you can show off this in the social media of your preference. And speaking of that, feel free to tag me if you post your creations. My day always gets a little bit better when someone shares the art that they created based on these tutorials. Alright, I'll see you soon with a new tutorial. Happy sculpting! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.